Every single day we have decisions. We make choices that are big, small, or in between. And some of us are better at it than others. But either way it goes, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to improve your decision-making skills starting right now. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. So let's get into today's topic. I recently read a study done by Cornell University, and they said that we make up to 35,000 conscious decisions every single day. That was alarming to me. I knew we made choices, but I didn't know it was that many on a daily basis. And they talked about some of those choices being habitual and some of those being conscious and unconscious. But before we get into it, I need for you to put in the chat box, tell me what are some of the things you do and what you consider when you have to make a decision, whether that's a big one or a small one. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about in regards to decision making is to gather information and consider your options. Before you make any type of decision, I need for you to collect and gather as much information as possible that's going to help you make an informed decision. So do your little research, talk to people, weigh the pros and the cons, do what you need to do to see all of the various outcomes and consequences that can occur from whatever decision you're about to make. And this could be as simple as what you're going to eat for breakfast, or it can be as big as what is your career choice going to be? To be honest with you, gathering as much information is probably one of the first steps that you need to do. And I would advise away from just going off of instinct, going off of that gut feeling of like, oh, I sporadically and randomly just want to get up and do this and make this choice today. And so I'm going to do it. Oftentimes that doesn't always yield us the best results. So remember, don't go off of your emotions because those are fleeting and they change all the time. I often say that emotions are not indicative of truth or feelings are not indicative of truth. That also means that just because you sad or mad doesn't mean that you really should be sad and mad and making decisions off of that feeling, right? It's like, let me calm down, get back to a place where I'm centered and I'm feeling good. Then I can make a decision versus coming from a place where I'm already experiencing negative emotion. So an informed decision is the best decision. The second way to improve your decision-making skills is to set clear goals and priorities. You need to consider all the things, clarify your objectives before making an impulse decision, because essentially you want whatever decision you're about to make, you want that to be in alignment with your goals, with your values, with your long-term plan. Because when we start saying yes and doing things that don't align with our goals and our morals and our beliefs, that's when things get a little tricky and off kilter and we wind up experiencing consequences that we did not need to experience because we made a poor choice based off of something different than what we are essentially settled with. And a big part of this one is to consider the impact that you're going to have based on the decision that you make. Sometimes we make decisions and it's just going to impact us and that's it. But if you're someone who is partnered, has a spouse, has children, has employees, the decisions that you make today can impact other people and their livelihood as well. So making sure you're not just making and doing a selfish decision is really important. The third way to improve your decision-making skills is to practice decision-making skills in low stake situations. Let me say this again for the people in the back. Don't try to make all of these big grand decisions when you can probably practice this skill set on a lower level, right? So we talked about those big goals, career, family, you know, all of those things and decisions that you have to make. But simply figuring out, hmm, what am I going to eat for breakfast this morning? If I eat this sausage and I know that I have high blood pressure, is it going to spike my blood pressure or I should take and make another option that's gonna be a little bit more healthier for me and I won't end up in the emergency room because my blood pressure is off the chart, right? Like, so we need to think about making decisions on lower levels that's not going to cost us as much depending on what the outcome is going to be. But also this really boosts your confidence. So if you're making, practicing making low level decisions 
on a regular basis, things that are not too risky, things that are not going to be life altering and life changing. You're essentially building confidence. You're essentially building that muscle. And what you're doing is sharpening your skills. So when a big decision comes up, when a harder decision comes up, it's going to be easy for you to make the decision and make a good choice because you have been practicing lower stakes situations and choices all along. When the pressure is on and the stakes are high and everybody is looking at you to make this decision, you can make it with ease. You can do it quickly because you have been basically practicing this whole entire time. The fourth way to improve your decision-making skills is to evaluate and tweak. This means you have to be aware and assess. This means you have to be real honest with yourself. This means you have to look at the positives and the negatives of the decision that you're making. Tweak and change things if needed, if that's even required in the first place. So this is where you look at your desired outcome. This is where you look at what worked well. This is where you look at what could have been done differently. And you use your own feedback and what you observe to make an informed decision. You also may receive the feedback of other people so that can inform your decision later on so if you are in partnership or relationship with someone or someone is observing your decision making and your decision making skills and they have some feedback for you or some insight don't brush that off like <laughs> leave me alone I got this over here but maybe they can add some value to the conversation so the next time you have to make a decision it is more informed and it's from a good place and is going to help benefit all of the people that's around you to be honest this isn't an overnight process sometimes the tweaking and the changing and observing and the feedback takes a little bit of time but once you figure out what it is it's going to help skyrocket you to getting to that next level that you need to get at and the fifth thing and the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts that can help improve your decision making skills is vicarious learning. Essentially what vicarious learning is, is when you are learning from the observation of someone else. That means you didn't necessarily have to go through it. You didn't necessarily have to experience it. You didn't have to get your own fingers wet. Just seeing and experiencing what somebody else went through is enough for you to learn a lesson. But if you see somebody go and touch the top of the stove and their hand gets burned, you know that you shouldn't go and touch the top of the stove because your hand is going to get burned. You didn't have to experience firsthand of your own hand being burned in order to know that that is hot and that that is going to cause some type of injury. So the same thing goes with our decision-making skills. When we see people make a decision in regards to their business and entrepreneurship or their employees or with their family or with their kids or with schooling or education or marriage or having kids or whatever goals, financial goals, if you see someone make a poor decision, you know, ooh, I probably shouldn't do that next time because if I do that, I can probably experience that negative outcome too. And that's not what I'm trying to do. But on the flip side, it's true too. So you can experience and see someone who's making great choices. Every single time they do a thing, it just landing and it's hitting. You also can learn from that experience too and say, oh, when this person did this and they did that after that, that helped them and they were able to be more fill in the blank. And that's going to help you to be able to do that as well. So vicarious learning is a very powerful tool that we don't talk about enough. We are in this culture where we feel like we have to experience it firsthand in order for it to be valid, to be facts, and to be helpful. And that's dumb because there's so many different types of learning styles and ways to learn that we are neglecting some of the most important ones. We don't even realize that there's different ways to learn things because we're just stuck on one way that we have been taught our whole entire life when essentially a lot of us can be learning vicariously through other people and our whole life could be changed. So let me give my final thoughts on this because it's a wrap. I know making decisions is not always an easy task. I was kind of playful and a little jokey in some areas of this video because not all of our decisions, like that study at Cornell University expressed, like some of the things we do are very habitual. Some of the things we do are very unconscious and requires very minimal thought. You know, if I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is turn on the light, you know, that didn't require a whole effort of like, hmm, should I turn on the light? Should I turn off the light? If I turn off the light and keep it off, it's going to be dark in here. If I turn it on, there's going to be light. Like some 
decisions. We don't need to be doing all of the things that we talked about in this video. It's very quick and to the point. But also, there's really some powerful decisions that we have to make in our life that will literally be life altering. And to be honest with you, those decisions and making those can make you or break you. And I want you to have all of the tools that you need to make informed decisions, to make good choices, to be a person that isn't necessarily perfect, but is trying to get it right and is willing and open to be in a position where there's change that can happen, whether that's change within yourself or changes from what other people have given you in regards to their feedback and insight. So don't feel like you are in this space where it's just like, well, it's me. I make bad choices. If you are a person that makes bad choices, guess what? You can still a minute from now, <laughs> an hour from now, a day from now, choose to make better choices. One, by watching a video like this, but also to remember we have over 35,000 opportunities per day to make a good choice. So if you made a bad choice in this moment, five minutes from now, you have the opportunity to make a good one. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. Make sure to like, comment, share this with somebody who needs it. And I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.